All right, we are ready to go on EOFN today, our lads football network. And it's actually been a while since we've had the opportunity to interview a player. Uh, we, we did a whole lot of that a few years ago. We went away from it. But I'm uh, real happy that we're turning back into that direction. Maybe a little bit early, of course. The 2024 draft is uh, far from uh, – uh, a big deal here on this network, uh, but it's always something that's in the back of our minds, of course, uh, player scouting, things of that nature. And so bringing in Grayson McCall from Coastal Carolina, a quarterback prospect for the 24 draft is something that I'm, uh, I'm pretty stoked about. Grayson, thanks for doing this. Uh, and uh, I know I probably sound a little bit silly because I'm twice your age, but uh, I, I, I'm a big fan. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on. All right, Grayson. So how's the first training camp going with Tim Beck? It's going awesome, man. You know, the transition's been really smooth. Um, just, you know, uh, putting standards in place, what the expectation is. And obviously when you uh, when you have a new coordinator on both sides of the ball, you have to learn a new offense or, um, you know, learn new terminology and things like that. But um, I think the team has uh, adapted really well um, to their their plan and what, what they want to accomplish this year. And uh, it's been it's been nothing but great. We had a uh, we had a really good summer, um, you know, running and lifting things like that, and um, you know, camp's been really good so far. So, um, looking forward to just continuing, um, you know, carrying the momentum with us, and you know, taking it into week one when we go to UCLA. Uh, biggest uh, changes as far as uh, just whether it's the offense or for you in particular. Yeah, you know, I think um, you know all around the country, everybody kind of does similar things. Um, I think the toughest part about the transition is just um, the terminology and, um, you know, learning from new coaching and taking new coaching. And, um, you know, it, it's all, it's always a little different to, to how they teach things and how they verbalize things in the meeting room. But, um, you know, having, having um, the spring and to get, you know, familiar with the system helped out a lot and um, feeling really comfortable in the system so far. So I, you know, I feel great. And I know the guys around me feel great. So we're really excited. Uh and what about the team? Uh, what do you, what do we got looking forward to this year? I know last year, uh, even though the team uh, played in uh, in the championship game, it's it just seemed like it was a little bit of a down year. You even missed a few games. So, uh, what are the goals for uh, the team and for you personally this year? Yeah, I mean uh, the standard here hasn't changed. You know, we going into every game, we expect to win. That that's the that's the standard here. Um, obviously, we want to play in the Sun Belt Championship game and uh, you know get to a New York, New York Six Bowl if possible, but. Um, you know, every year we want to play for that Sunbelt title and we want to we want to play in a bowl game. Um, for me personally, um, you mentioned me met, missing some games last year. My, my biggest goal going into the year is to to be available for every game, to, to play every game and to stay healthy. Um, I've had I've had a really good offseason putting on weight, um, put on about 20 pounds um, this offseason. Actually, so I'm feeling really good, feeling stronger. Um, got got a little extra armor on me, so I feel really good. And. Um, you know, other than, you know, winning games and, and statistical goals, I think, you know, my biggest goal for this year is to, to be healthy and uh, to be a, be available for every game. Well, uh, talk about your game. And, and now, of course, you've got uh, a new coach who uh, hopefully will help you. And I, I read somewhere where you talked about maybe uh, this is uh, a good coach that can help you to make the transition into the NFL, be an NFL quarterback. Uh, what do you have to do to improve your game? Are, are you zeroing in on something specific? Not, of course, just staying healthy, which is important, but anything specific regarding your game that you think you have to improve on, improve upon to I be mean, a really good NFL quarterback? Yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, I'm always working on working on different things, but um, you know, just the mental aspect of things, being able to conduct a huddle and um, to to get familiar with play calls, and you know, that goes into to knowing defensive structure and what defense is like to do in situational football. Um, but for me, it's just always, you know, polishing the mechanics, throwing on the run, uh, pocket movement stuff, um, you know, having a lead ball security and um, keeping the ball in our hands and not putting it in the defense's hands. So, um, you know, just always trying to polish my game and, and those little details. And, um, you know, I think with with a new staff coming in and um, me taking what I've already learned and kind of building upon it by taking new coaching, uh, I think it's been really good. And um, just trying to make some of those those pro throws, you know, when guys are in your face, barreling down on you. Um, you know, hanging in there and making the big time throws. So um, I know I've got it in me. I think I, I put it on tape a little bit. Uh, I think I'm going to do a much better job of doing that this year as well. Okay. Uh, what do you pride yourself the most on as far as what you've been able to do at this point in time? What, like, what's, uh, what, what, what makes you a really good quarterback and a three time uh, player of the year in the conference? Yeah. I think when you look at my stats over the, the past three years, it's, 
it's taking care of the football. I haven't thrown many interceptions in my career. Um, I think two, maybe three is the most I've thrown in a season. Um, and I think that's really important as a quarterback. You know, you take care of the ball. Um, you know, try not to force things. Obviously, when, when plays are there, um, you got to make them. Um, but, you know, just taking care of the football, keeping it in our hands, reserving the right to kick, um, in and in every drive with a the, with the kick is kind of the mentality I, I take um, into every game. And, um, you know, just, just being a professional and, and making the right decisions, whether that's throwing the ball away or having to tuck it and run it in certain situations. And um, for me, it's just getting the ball to my playmakers and letting them run. So um, I, would, I would say, you know, ball security is what I pride myself on the most. And uh, I think I've done a, a really good job of that so far. But, um, you know, you ne ne no matter if it's just three interceptions, you never want to throw one. Sure. So you know, that's still tough. But um, I think I've done a really good job of that so far. Okay. Now, as far as uh, the team itself, you've got a big game coming up uh, with UCLA. Would this be considered your biggest game? Is this the biggest opponent that you faced on your schedule? Um, you know, I, I don't know. That's a tough question. I, I know it's a really big game for us. Um, be just because we're going to play in the Rose Bowl, we're traveling across the country to play a big 12 team, uh, a Pac-12 team. I apologize. Um, so, I mean, I think it's a big game. I know, obviously, we played a top 10 team on college game day and have played some really, um, you know, some good teams. But, um, you know, it's the biggest one for us because it's the next one. Sure. Um, obviously, it's the it's the first game of the season. So um, that, that's kind of going to show us what type of team we're going to have this season. But um, what I do know is that we're extremely excited. We're going to prepare the best we can. And, um, you know, we're going to have our best players out there to give us the best chance to win. So. Um, the standard is to, to go down there to Pasadena and win the football game and come back and um, take the momentum into the season. So um, we're really looking forward to it. I know it's going to be a big game. Obviously, being able to play in the Rose Bowl is huge. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be awesome. We're really excited for it. Yeah, looking forward to that one. So I read also somewhere where UCLA was a team that was uh, considering – uh, your services. Of course, you uh, opted out of the transfer portal. Uh, I believe it was January 1st, somewhere around that time. A lot of people thought you were a goner. Coach left. Maybe he's going to follow him. That always happens, right? Usually happens. Talented kid. He's going to go somewhere. He's not going to stay at Coastal Carolina, is he? And yet, that's exactly what you did. You decided to stay. Uh, were you ever seriously close to leaving? Yeah, I mean, I definitely had thought of it. Um, you know, going into the transfer portal was pretty much just me wanting to do it the right way. And um, you know, I had teams reaching out and I had opportunities that presented themselves. And um, I felt like it, it was the right time to do it when Coach Chowell announced that he was leaving um, just so I could explore what other opportunities I had. And, um, you know, whenever I, I found out that Coach Beck was taking the job and, um, you know, get, be, being able to sit down and talk with him um, was huge for me. You know, Coastal Carolina and Coach Beck and his staff were recruiting me just as hard as any other school in the country. Um, so when it came down to it, I never really wanted to leave. I knew I wanted to um, put myself in a better position to, um, to you know, excel and get to the next level. Sure. Um, but after sitting down and talking with Coach Beck and, um, you know, the type of quarterbacks he's developed, the places he's been, um, you know, it, it was really it was really inspiring to, to know that, you know, this guy could be my head coach. And uh, obviously he was a quarterback coach and, and called the plays where he was, but now he's a head coach. So it's almost like I have two quarterback coaches. It's awesome. Um, but, you know, I never really wanted to leave. I love this place. I love the guys in the building, um, the community. I, I just love it. I love it here. And um, I knew I would have regretted it if I left. So, um, you know, confident I made the right decision, you know, really excited about being here with this staff and kind of having a fresh start. Um, so, yeah, it was, you know, a tough decision, tough couple of weeks there. But, um, you know, really excited and really happy about the decision I made. Well, I got to tell you right now, I mean, I've been – following coaches a long time and at the next level and what they look at as far as college kids and uh, loyalty is a big one. I'm sure that's going to go a long way. Um, I got to ask you, when did you first start seriously thinking about the NFL? And I say seriously, because every kid of course grows up. I want to play in the NFL. Was there a particular point in your college career uh, where you said, you know what? I can, pl I think I could play in the NFL. Yeah. You know what? It happened really fast for me. Obviously I redshirted in 19 and then uh, won, won the job in camp probably really about a week before the season opener. And then, you know, once the season got started, we started rolling. Next thing you know, we're 10-0 playing yeah. on college game day. Like yeah. everything happened really fast for me. And at that time, I was just a kid out there playing ball, you know, not, not listening to the critics, what they had to say, um, you know, what's going on in the media, stuff like that. Like, I was literally a, you know, 18-year-old out there just playing, playing backyard football. And 
coming to work every day and, and just wanting to win. And um, I think going into it to the uh, off season after the 2020 season, um, being around some other, you know, really good quarterbacks in college football and um, going into that 21 season and kind of having the same type of success. It's like, you know, when I look at the tape and I look at these other guys in the country, it's like, you know, there's really nothing they can do that I can't do. Um, and so it was just a, a sense of confidence. And um, when I start talking to scouts and, you know, other guys in the building, um, coaches that have been in the NFL, coaches that have been around uh, really good quarterbacks and just hearing from them like, hey, man, like you can continue doing what you're doing. Like you have a good shot at this. And, uh, you know, that's just it's just a good thing to hear. It, it inspires you. And, um, you know, obviously that's a dream I've had since a very young age. And um, just to know that, that that there's a slight possibility of, that I could play the next level is is awesome. And uh, it's been a long journey. But, um, yeah, I, I would probably say, you know, going into that 21 season, I'm like, you know, I think I think I might be able to do this. Thing. Yeah. And, and having the – I mean, watching someone like Brock Purdy say, seventh-round draft pick, and now he's starting probably for San Francisco this year, that must make you feel even that much better because it, it wasn't that long ago where it's like, well, if you're not a first-round draft pick, the odds of you being successful in the NFL pretty slim. The Tom Brady's of the world, they don't come around very often. Um, so that has to make you feel pretty good too, huh, to see a kid that, that, that went – the distance, a lot of experience, and that's a rare thing in college as well. You're going to be bringing in a lot of experience to the NFL that you must also feel a little bit like, hey, you know what? If, if Brock can do it as a seventh-round draft pick, yeah, I don't. who cares where I get drafted? I, I think I can make it. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think that's a big thing. Um, you know, for me, it's like if if I have the, the privilege of, of getting my name called in the NFL draft, I don't care where it is. You know, that, that'll be phenomenal. I get the question all the time, like, if you could go play for one team in the NFL, where would you go? I'm like, dude, I don't care. You know, whoever, <laughs> yeah. whoever wants to give me a chance, that would be awesome. Um, I think the other thing is like when you see guys like Trey Lance or you know guys like Bailey Zappi recent years that they get drafted from smaller schools. You know, it's if you're good enough, they're gonna find you. It doesn't yes. matter where you play. You see Division three, Division two guys getting drafted every other year, and um, you know that's motivating. And um, that's another thing that goes into you know my decision to stay. You know. If, uh, if I can put it on tape and show them that I'm good enough, I don't think it really matters where I am or, or who I'm going against. So, um, obviously, the Brock Purdy story is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, I think it's definitely inspiring to guys like myself and, and other guys in the group of five. And, you know, coming from smaller programs, I think it's definitely encouraging. Um, before I let you go, a couple of quick things. And I'm going to pop up on the screen, the R lads. That's what we're uh, – that's what we're famous for, our depth charts. And we're going to put the depth chart up there uh, while I ask you about give me a give me a few players um, that could become household names because you're one of them. So give me a couple of other players that we should be keeping an eye on. Uh, I, I, I'm not trying to make you pick out players. I, I'm, oh, you're not, good. I'm not trying to make you do that, but give me a couple of players that you know you you think that the rest of the country needs to keep an eye on. Yeah, I mean, I think a guy that's kind of proven himself, he definitely, you know, proved himself last year, um, coming from a D2 school and, and having a phenomenal year last year and, and bringing a lot of guys back. And, you know, I think that's Austin Reed at, at Western Kentucky. Um, you know, I got the chance to meet him at the Manning Passing Academy. Uh, phenomenal guy, really good guy. But, you know, you, you pull up the tape and it's like, this. there's not a throw on the field this guy can't make. You know what I mean? So uh, definitely say Austin Reed. Um Let's see. Um, and then uh, kind of a, a, a bigger name guy that, that transferred from NC State, Devin Leary, going to, um, you know, Kentucky and yes. playing the FPC. Um, I think he, he has a great chance of, you know, putting his name and solidifying his career and, um, you know, doing something special in the SEC. So I think he's another guy. How about um, on your team? Oh, on my team? No, well, that's good. I'm glad you gave me those. But I yeah, also yeah, want I, your – yeah, I, give me your yeah, team. Yeah. yeah um, let's see. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, a guy that's really, you know, stood out early in camp is a uh, is a, a corner, a D2 transfer corner. Um, he played at a, a D2 school in Oklahoma, East Central University, I believe that's oh, right. Okay. Um, Keontae Lusk, um, he's had a phenomenal camp. Um, shorter guy, but, you know, a thick guy, strong guy, can move really well, a press corner that can play really good man coverage. Um can, can really play with anybody. So I'm really excited about Keontae. I think he's going to have a really big year. Yeah, I didn't even see him on the depth chart. So he, did he come in late? He did, yeah. He, yeah, he, okay. he just got here in the summer. Great. Perfect one. And how about on offense? A uh, couple of guys that you have uh, 
had good chemistry with that you think could have a breakout year? Yeah, um, you know, kind of a, a guy that's kind of been floating around the surface in terms of, um, you know, getting mentioned and kind of he, he's been right there to having a breakout year the past two years. And that's Tyson Mobley. Um, I, I, I've seen the kid grow in so many aspects of life and, um, you know, on the field, he's doing fabulous things for us. Um, just the way he thinks in terms of route plan and, um, you know, he, he, he really understands spacing on the field and, and finding the soft spots in the zone. And then on top of that, he's really fast and he has great hands and um, he's kind of developed into a, a, a leader um, in our offense. And I think Tyson Moby's going to have a really big year. Excellent. Last question before I let you go, Grayson. And again, I appreciate you doing this. Uh, is there a player in the NFL that is either retired or someone that's still playing quarterback, maybe even specifically your quarterback that you followed uh, the most. Maybe he's a favorite of yours. Maybe you emulate after his game, you know, someone like that. Yeah. I mean, the first guy that comes to mind for me is, uh, is Jalen hurts. And, um, I remember um, when he was at Alabama and um, in the national championship game when, when you know, he got pulled in and Tua went in and won the game for yes, him. Yes, yes. Um, you know, the things that stood out for me was just the way he acted on the sideline and um, how he, he went into the presser after the game and had nothing but good things to say about, you know, Tua. And, um, you know, I've been in quarterback battles like that, and I understand, like, how things can get awkward or, or maybe you you kind of downplay a guy. You don't want him to do as good as you because you're kind of competing against him. Um, so, you know, from the jump, I was like, I had so much respect for the guy. And then, you know, I, I kind of think our play emulate each other a little bit. Um, uh, we both don't have the strongest arms. I think um, we both have really good feet and timing with the throws to make things work. And um, I think we're both pretty good runners. I would say he's probably a little better runner than me, but – um, you know, when things break down and, and you need someone to make a play and extend yes. the play and scramble, scramble around a little bit, um, I think we have some similarities in our game. And, yes. And, um, he had a phenomenal year last year. It was really fun watching him. Their offense was really good. Um, so, yeah, Jalen Hurts, I really like watching him. And, you know, as a dude off the field, I really respect what he does. Yeah, Grayson, because that's the thing I, I really respect about your game as well, because watching college football as long as I have, the thing that I really – noticed about your game is your ability to come up big in the biggest spots when your team needs it and needs you the most. And that's really what caught my eye. It's not an easy thing to do no matter what level you are in, uh, in the FBS. And, uh, and I think that's going to take you a long way in the NFL. And I, I look forward to following your career and uh, hopefully we'll get an, an opportunity to talk when you're a pro. Yes, sir. I hope so. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Grayson.